Hi, my name is Chris Morrison. I'm one of the partners at Perryfield Lawyers, which is a Christchurch-based law firm. Uh, and with me today, I have Stephen Moe, also one of my partners at Perryfield. And we have been talking about some of the issues that are coming up for uh, business owners in the context of the current lockdown and thought it might be helpful to share some ideas. Uh, and so one thing I wanted to ask you about, Stephen, uh, relates to commercial contracts. Uh, and one of the clauses that we're getting some questions about at the moment is the force majeure clause. Um, so maybe you could start by telling us what is a force majeure clause and why might that be relevant in the current lockdown? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, it's, it's definitely relevant in the current lockdown. I can tell you that much. Um, a force majeure, it's actually a French word and it means superior force. So what it's trying to get at is that the law recognizes that in certain situations, it won't be fair for a contractual party to actually complete the provision of services or providing goods. Um, and that's because something big has happened, something beyond the reasonable control of the parties. Um, to just give an example, a practical one, if I had a contract with you, Chris, and I was gonna supply you with 100 boxes of chocolate bars, and you ha I had a factory and you've got a place that I needed to deliver it to, and I was all set to do it and then an event happened like some sort of a flood or something a bridge got washed out that would be an event which was beyond my control and so the contract if it has the cause would step in and say actually you know what it's not fair on Stephen to, to complete this contract because something has happened that's so much bigger than the parties thought they can't actually do it so that's the kind of context for it the key thing to maybe um, remember is that it depends on what your contract says. So the first step is to look at your contract. Okay, so if I've found my contract, I'm having a look, I've found the force majeure clause. What are some of the different sort of ideas that I might see coming up in these clauses and how, how can they differ from contract to contract? Yeah, well, that's the thing is that in my experience, they're often not just templates pasted from different um, spots. So what you need to look at is how are the events described? Is it in a generic way um, or is it really specific? If it's very specific, then the parties may have contemplated a certain type of event that would count as a force majeure event. So it wouldn't cover every possible thing. But if there's a more generic description, um, sometimes the phrase act of God is used, and that's kind of a, a broad covering over many different types of things. So that would be the first thing, is just to okay. check how our events actually describe. And obviously, in the context of COVID-19, the key thing that you're looking for, if it's there, would be a reference to disease or epidemics, because right. that would land squarely within that particular cause. Okay, uh, and and what might be the impact then? So you 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 have a look at the clause. It does make reference to um, in, a range of factors, including epidemics and the like. Uh, as if you're wanting to get the benefit of a force majeure clause, are there any steps you usually need to take? Yeah, well, the the first thing uh, to mention before I answer that question is it it's not a case of it's just more expensive to complete the contract. Okay. The fact that it costs more to complete the contract isn't actually the force majeure. So um, in my example of the chocolate you know, delivery, mm -hmm. if something had happened and I could still get you the chocolate bars, then even if it costs me more and I wouldn't be making money from the contract, I would still have to take all those steps to get sure. it to you. Um, but then to answer your question, normally the cause is very clear about what happens next. And there will be something about notice has to be provided, probably mm -hmm. a notice in writing that a force majeure event has occurred. And then what really is happening is that the contract is kind of going on pause. It's kind of on hold for the period that that force majeure event is running. So in the context of COVID-19, I would be drafting a notice to the other party and saying, COVID-19 lockdown has happened, we literally cannot go to our factory to create the widgets that we were due to send to you. We invoke the force majeure cause and um, this is our notice. 
Um, the other thing is that if it goes on for a certain time period, sometimes 30 days, sometimes 90 days, then sometimes there's rights to terminate the contract as well. But it will right. just depend on the on the contract and what the wording says. So that's why these contracts are important to, to dust off and have a look at. So it sounds like, again, one of the key lessons is make sure you've got a copy of your contract and, and actually read it to see what it says. Well, I think this is going to be an ongoing lesson from what we're going through right now is, is the reality is many people have, have contracts or agreements in place based on a coffee or a handshake. And so maybe in the future, they'll want to consider, um, you know, being quite rigorous about defining contracts and what they say about things like force majeure. And if I get my contract and I can't see any reference to force majeure in there, are there any other sort of equivalent types of clauses or language that I might find in the contract that might be relevant? Yeah, the, the other one that immediately springs to mind would be something called a material adverse change. So sometimes contracts will have these built in that something so drastically different has happened that the contract itself can't proceed. So be looking for a material adverse change cause, sometimes called a MAC cause. Okay. Um, those, are, those are a bit more common in like if there was um, a buying and selling a business, you know, something's happened between signing the agreement to purchase and actually completing the purchase. Um, but it might be in, in other contracts. And then the other thing um, I would be looking at is actually the termination cause. What does it say? Um, you know, it's important to be aware. Is there 30 days notice? Is there 10 days notice? Does it have to be in writing? You know, how do you actually terminate? Because one of the things that will become more and more relevant is can we actually proceed with the contract that's in place? Even if the force majeure cause, even if there is no force majeure cause, maybe we have to look at other options. Um, and then the final thing, which we won't go into in detail, is that there's also a doctrine of frustration. Okay. So the law can actually step in and if the contract itself is frustrated and cannot, cannot be fulfilled because of some reason, then that could also be relevant. But again, it will depend on the circumstances and the context. So um, yeah, it's something that we would talk about with the client. Thanks, Stephen. And uh, as I'm sure you've been experiencing over the last week or so, these are the sorts of questions that we're getting asked ourselves by our commercial clients and trying to figure out what happens next. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, these answers will be of, of use to, to many of our clients and, and others just trying to get their heads around um, this unusual situation we, we find ourselves in. So thanks for taking the time and giving us uh, that, that information. Yeah, no problem, Chris. And the other thing to mention is we've got a bunch of resources on our website at perryfield.com. And we look at issues like um, leases and at, on what grounds would there be to um, pay a reduced amount of rent. And we've also looked at wage subsidies and how you apply for those. And there'll be a series of other articles that are coming out in the coming weeks. Great. Thank you.